Hola Javier, ¿cómo estás? Aquí estamos con Bill Warner, founder and chairman of the Amelia Island Concours d'Elegance, que está en its 20th year, 20 years doing this, huh Bill? Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's, and some days it's easy to believe, on some days it's hard to believe. How did this all come about? Uh, I got a phone call from a lady named Patty Hendricks, who was a uh, public relations director for the Ritz-Carlton, and they wanted to do a, a high-end car show here at the Ritz-Carlton, uh, initially to fill a hotel room on a slow weekend, which was Easter. So the first year we did it on Easter weekend, and after that I said, no, 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 no worries. Even NASCAR knows you don't race on Easter and Mother's Day. So we decided to move it to March, and we were working around – Uh, the Players Golf Championship, the Bosch and Loam Tennis Tent Championship, Sebring, Daytona, everything's going on. And we settled on the second full weekend in March in order to uh, lead into Sebring and follow the Gator Nationals because when all the automobile people are down here. That's kind of how we got the date. And we've kind of stuck with it. But uh, it's uh, generally a good time of year for people to come south. And uh, uh, it's a good place to be in Florida. You know, Amelia Island is one of my favorite concourse, and one of the reasons that it's uh, one of my favorite shows is not just because of the quality of the vehicles, but it has a sense of what um, Pebble used to be a long time ago. And uh, But this is a great show. I mean, how do you conserve that here at the show? I, I think it's a southern thing. I think the, the culture of this area is one of... Uh, Uh, I would say politeness and accommodation. And uh, uh, I, I've asked that question myself. I hear a lot of people say it's so friendly, quote unquote, compared to other shows, 981 in particular. And I think it, it reflects uh, how we, our staff, and, and I define how we want to uh, treat our guests that come here. I mean, the people who bring the cars are truly guests. And they're the ones that make the show. And we want it to be a pleasant experience for them. And for the people who come out for the show, we always like to do something a little serendipitous, something other shows wouldn't do. We like to push the envelope a little bit. And like this year, we're doing Cars of the, of the Cowboys, you know, these great Western cars with s steer horns and horseshoes and pistols and everything. I mean, just that is not a Concord car, but it is a fun class to see. It's, it's, it's entertainment. And that's all part of what we do here. What, speaking of the vehicles, um, what, are, what are the judging principles based on for this? Um, most important of all is originality uh, and provenance. Uh, the presentation of the car, certainly it's got to be a, you know, a, a top-notch restoration, but it, It's got to be a car, too, that's driven. We, we, we're not really wild about trailer queens, you know, that, that drive from the parking lot to the field and back again. Uh, an example was when we did uh, the feature on Ford GT40s. Um, we had 18 of them, and they were all fantastic. We had five Golf GT40s, and one of them was absolutely drop-dead, brand-new, gorgeous. And it, it's a great car. But the car that won the award that year, uh, the, the good car won its class. The, uh, I mean, the great car won its class. Uh, there was another car that was two-time Le Mans winner. Its provenance was superb to anything else that was out there. It wasn't a perfect car, but because it had been driven a lot. But we gave the award to the car because of its provenance in addition to its presence and uh, its, rest, its level of restoration and its uh, accuracy. Not to say the other car wasn't. But somewhere in the equation, the history of the car and its provenance has to have weight in the decision. And, and that's an example of when it did. Um, uh, it's important that you, we pick cars that don't have a sordid history. You know, there's, there's, you know I, I don't think we have too many problems with that, but there are cars that are made up. You know, they, they've, they've been modified, and we try to vet the cars out so that we, we know what we're dealing with by serial numbers and by history. So, uh, when the judges look at the car, they're looking at uh, the presentation, the accuracy. Uh, from a design standpoint, how does the design stand up over the years? Uh, the color choices, there's, there's a number of factors that go into uh, determining the best of the best. 
Now, over 20 years, which has been your favorite car that has won here at Amelia? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. Um, it's like asking which is your favorite child. See, that's how you put a person like yourself on the spot. Which is your favorite car that has won? Because I'm sure it must be terribly difficult. Um, it is terribly difficult. I, I'd have to say, I'd have to pick pre-war and post-war. And uh, Oscar Davis's 2.9 liter Alpha one here one year, and that's that's one of my all-time favorite cars. It should be everybody's all-time favorite car. You know, pre-war, performance car. It was kind of uh, laid the groundwork for Enzo Ferrari to build the Ferraris. 2.9 Alpha. Uh, I love the Ford GT40. Uh, the uh, Duesenberg Mormon Meteor of Harry Yagi's fa- favorite car. Uh, my my taste seemed to run more towards the sports sports cars and race cars than it does towards the classics just because of my personal uh, uh, preferences. But, um, yeah, I'd have to say that and the Ferrari GTO. Yeah. Well, you have impeccable tastes in vehicles. (laughs) Well, I just want to thank you for being on the show here today with us, and uh, we look forward to an amazing, amazing uh, concourse here at the New York Island. Thank you. I do, too. (laughs) Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.